Okay, so chapter 8 is about Laplace transforms. And Laplace transforms are a transform is something that you, you change, in this case a differential equation, transform it to something else so that we can solve it. So we'll be kind of <clears throat> learning a little more about that in this section. So uh, first of all, it, they're named after Pierre Simon Laplace, who was a French mathematician. This is him in his um, wig and his best dress, so you can get a sense of about when he lived. And I just put, a lot of people say, look at it and think it's Laplace. And so I said, this is the place, but this is Laplace. It's not this is the place, it's this is Laplace. Anyways, it's pronounced Laplace. And sort of the concept of a transform is like, here's our world and this is what it looks like. Okay, so we're used to how things look in our world. And we're going to transform, oops, sorry about that phone. Let me just cut that off. We're going to transform something and so it looks different. So our world looks different when we're in the transform world and then we're going to work with it in the transform world and then we're going to bring it back to our world where things look like what we're used to seeing. So we will take a differential equation, make it look different, be able to work with it in a different world and then bring it back to our world to have the solution. So this is kind of an illustration of the steps we're going to do to solve an initial value problem using a Laplace transform and then we'll see what the transform is and then we'll see how to use it. But bottom line you start with an initial value problem and there's some solution to it and you're trying to get to the solution with maybe the methods that we've learned so far in the course but there's some kind of an obstacle, maybe the way it's set up, maybe um, you're trying to model a spring mass thing, but you like hit it with a hammer to get it going first, and so it has this big jolt right at the first, and we didn't have a way to kind of express and solve that, and we will after we do this. But anyway, the idea is there's some kind of an obstacle in the way, so you can't just get to the solution. So you take the roundabout way, and what we're going to do is take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. We'll see how to do that in a minute and we'll end up with an algebraic equation and it's going to be in Laplace's world so it looks different. All of the functions will have capital letters and that signifies so we know they've been transformed and the independent variable instead of t will be s. Once we get it in Laplace's world by doing this transform then we will do some algebra to it and then once we've solved for it algebraically we will have it some function of s and then we will do an inverse trans whoops we got some background noise there then we have an inverse transform where we will undo the transform and we will have the solution so it's solving a differential equation by doing some algebra because of the way the transform um, works. So anyway, that's the kind of the road mapper idea of what we're doing. Now this um, is a picture of me like 20 years ago when I made this um, and I it works great on my desktop and I went this morning to try it and that something is blocking it. I'll try it but I don't think it's going to, no, it's not going to let me. So I actually had this program called Morph way back then and I don't even have it anymore so that's why I just left it here but it actually transforms my face into Laplace's so it's kind of fun but there's something on my school laptop that's blocking letting it run. So imagine I just transformed into Laplace. This is how we get things transformed into Laplace's world. Um, this is the official definition of what the Laplace transform is. So f is a function defined on an interval from 0 to infinity. So we're only going to, we're going to have some starting point. We're going to let that be 0 to infinity. And if you need it somewhere else, you can do a shift. So we don't have to just worry about that part of it, but we are only working with uh, positive there from zero this then is positive. Question. Uh huh. Go ahead. What section are we in? 8.1. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, we skipped chapter 7 because it's not considered in this um, 
introductory course and so now we're doing eight and Laplace transforms are used um, in electrical engineering classes I know for sure I um, a few years ago I sat in on Lee Brinton's class because he wanted me to see how they were using Laplace transforms and that would kind of let me know what we needed to teach and then he sat in on this class to see kind of what students were learning that were going to be coming to his double E classes but anyway so this is the definition and so it's an integral here you can see to get something from a function f and it's going to be f of t when you transform it to Laplace's world it's going to be capital F that lets us know what world we're in that lets us know it's a transform and the independent variable is going to be s and the way we're going to get this f of s is we're going to integrate from 0 to infinity e to the minus st f of t dt uh, this is something Laplace actually stumbled upon it when he was doing some probability stuff with integrals but you're like why did he do that and it's because it works to solve differential equations and he kind of accidentally discovered it it was kind of interesting the kind of the history there but anyway it's provided that the improper integral converges because remember in calc 2 we've learned how to deal with um, infinite limit on our integral it's an improper integral so we take the limit as b goes to infinity and replace that with the b but we would need this to converge to something and so as long as that converges we have a Laplace transform and the Laplace transform is denoted by oh apparently on my laptop it doesn't have the font that it has on my desktop that's not showing up but this right here it's a script L so you're taking Whoops, let me just rewrite that. This pen is better not be acting up again today. Okay, so a kind of a script L, that's how I write it when I'm signifying it on paper, but it's a, a font that has kind of a goofy looking script looking L, but that means the Laplace transform of some function. Okay, so this is the part we need to know that I just highlighted there in green. And so we need to basically memorize that. It's not hard to memorize. You just integrate from 0 to infinity, e to the minus st, f of t, dt. We're going to be learning how to do that and what it looks like and how to use it. So today we're just going to be learning how to transform things and, and then get them back. And we won't be solving any differential equations today. We're just laying the groundwork, getting all the tools. And then on Wednesday, we'll see how you use this transform to solve differential equations. OK, so if we wanted to apply this, let's try that on some functions. Let's start with a super easy one. If we wanted to transform 1, so the Laplace transform would be and actually I'm not going to write it like that I'm going to write it like this so this if you put an L and then a bracket and you put the function in that you're going to transform that just means I'm doing the Laplace transform of 1 alright so what I do is I do the integral from 0 no nope, I'm not going to do that I'm going to actually make it as a limit since it's an improper integral so limit as B goes to infinity of 0 to B e to the minus st now right here in the formula is whoops there it goes is where you put the function so I'm gonna write it it's not gonna change it here because it's just a 1 dt so after you do that then we need to see if we can work that integral um, I just saw Victor's talking about the sound is the sound a problem today anybody is it still I actually am using my headset because I found the sound was kinda of going in and out okay good I'm glad it cleared up thanks Victor alright so let's do this integral then well the thing you gotta look at here is T is the variable of integration and so S is like a constant if you're integrating with respect to T so this is going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the minus st. Now the chain rule would have generated a negative s, so I need a negative 1 over s out in front. And um, 
then I need to evaluate that. So let me just get, so this is going to be evaluated from 0 to B. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the evaluation. So the limit as B goes to infinity of negative 1 over S, E to the minus S, that's where we'd put the B, because T was our variable of integration, minus, so that'll make that a plus, 1 over S, E to the minus S, putting in a 0. Okay. So that's what it looks like when we've done the evaluation. Now let's do, take the limit. So looking here, s is a constant, b is going to infinity. So minus 1 over s is just some constant out in front, but what's e to the minus sb going to do? Well, if s is positive, that's going to be e to the negative something going to go to 0. If s was negative, that would blow up. It would go to infinity. So we're going to have S be greater than zero um, for these transforms. So S is going to be greater than zero. So this is going to go to zero because it's e to the negative exponential. Now looking at the second term, e to the zero is one. Oh, this pen. e to the zero is one. So that's going to leave one over S. Okay, so what did we just find out in that doing that work? We found out if you Laplace transform 1, 1 in Laplace's world looks like 1 over s. Okay, so um, now let's try and Laplace transform t and see what happens. So we have the Laplace transform of t. I don't know what to do about this pen adding the lines there. I'll have to do some research, see if I can figure out what the problem is. Okay, so we're going to have that improper integral again, so I'm going to set it up as a limit. And to Laplace transform t, I have e to the minus st. Right here is where I put the function that I want to transform dt. All right, well, in looking at that, that's actually... Um, this uh, integrating, I'm going to write it in front instead of after, which I can move it either place, but just so I can easily see this integral. And I say, okay, all of our integration techniques from Calc 2, the improper integral we had to use, well, now this is an integration by parts because you've got two factors, a t and an e to the minus st. So I'm going to use tabular to do that. And I'll put it, I'm going to put it in a different color so it stands out and all the stuff on the slide. I'll just put it above here. So T1 and 0, e to the minus ST. Now remember my variable of integration is T. So it's e to the minus ST chain rule generated a negative S. So it's going to be out in front. And then e to the minus ST another negative 1 over s out in front. That'll make it a positive s squared. Okay, now remember this is plus. This one is minus. So when I've done that integral, let's go ahead and write it down here now. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity. And looks like when I multiply those first two, I get negative t over s e to the minus st and then the next one is negative um, 1 over s squared e to the minus st and that needs to be evaluated from 0 to b. Okay so let's go ahead and do the evaluation so we have the limit as b goes to infinity of negative b over s e to the minus sb. It didn't look, I was worried. There we go. Uh, minus 1 over s squared e to the minus sb. And then doing the lower limit, minus and minus makes it a plus 0 over s e to the 0. And then minus and minus makes a plus 1 over s squared e to the 0. Okay, so there's it is. Um, now we need to take the limit 
as b goes to infinity. Now I have two different b's here. I'm actually going to move the 1 over s out in front because that's just a constant. So I would have a b and an e to the minus sb. I'm going to move that down to the bottom because it had a negative exponent so we're wanting to see what happens as b goes to infinity and that's an indeterminate form b over b or b over e to the minus sb it's going to be infinity for the numerator and infinity for the denominator so we actually could use um, L'Hopital's rule on it um, so b is the thing that was going to infinity. So if we took a derivative there um, using L'Hopital's rule, I would get, I still have this, I'm going to leave that negative 1 over s in a minute. We're just evaluating the other piece. I'd get 1 here, and I'd get e to the, my, e, down at the bottom, I'd get e to the sb with an s on there. So as b goes to infinity, the denominator becomes huge. The numerator is fixed at a 1, so the whole thing is going to go to 0. So something like that is going to go to 0. Now it, this one, is this is just a constant out in front on this next term, and this is a negative exponential because, again, s is going to be greater than 0 on all of these, and so that is going to go to 0 as well. And then this one is 0. So this is the only thing left, and so e to the 0 is 1, so 1 over s squared is the Laplace transform of t. So if I'm in Laplace's world and I see 1 over s squared, I know it's a t. All right, we've got some more. We're just going to be applying this transform to see how different pieces of functions that we would be using, what they look like in Laplace's world, and then we'll be kind of seeing how we're going to use that later. All right, so let's try t squared then. So, so far we had 1 over s was 1, and 1 over s squared was t. So you might want to take a guess of what you think t squared might be. And then let's go ahead and work it using the definition to see what it is. So we're going to Laplace transform t squared. So we're going to have the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b e to the minus st. The f of t is next, but I'm going to write it in front so that we can think of the integral. Okay, so this one's going to be an integration by parts again, but it's a little bigger integration by parts. So I'll just put it right here. So we've got t squared, 2t, 2, and 0. So e to the minus st minus 1 over s, e to the minus st, 1 over s squared, e to the minus st, and negative 1 over s cubed, e to the minus st. Okay, then we multiply this one gets a plus, this one gets a minus, this one gets a plus. Okay, so we've got the limit as b goes to infinity, and the first part's going to be uh, minus t squared over s, e to the minus sb, Oh, sorry, I'm evaluating it at the same time. Let's just write down what it is first. Okay, so e to the minus st. Um, next one is minus 2t over s squared, e to the minus st. And the next one is minus 2 over s cubed, e to the minus st, evaluated from 0 to b. All right, so if we evaluate that, we have um, negative, we got the limit as b goes to infinity, and we have negative b squared. Let's see, let's move the, the negative and the 1 over s out of the way again. So we have t b squared, e to the minus sb, minus... 1 over s squared, 2 over s squared, and then b e to the minus sb minus 2 
over s cubed e to the minus sb and then subtracting the others we got minus minus makes a plus now this one I'm gonna put a zero in for the t squared so I'm not gonna write it just so I can fit everything here there's a t in the second one so putting zero in will disappear that as well and so the last one will be 2 over s cubed e to the zero okay so kinda of big and long but not too hard it's all stuff that we kinda of know and now as I look at this first piece if I rewrote it as b squared over e to the minus sb and did L'Hopital's rule a couple times this would go to zero basically the exponential is going to grow much faster than the polynomial and so that's going to go to zero similar to what I showed on the last one this is the one we did with L'Hopital's rule and we saw that that goes to zero uh, this one's a negative exponential so that's going to go to zero and so the zero is one so our transform is two over s cubed okay so what if we did a t cubed anybody have a guess of what t cubed is going to be kind of looking for a pattern so we could come up with a formula for t to any power what the Laplace transform would be okay so Jacob guessed exactly what probably the majority of the class would guess it looks like the numerators going up one and the denominators going up one in the power but that's not right it's a good guess it's what everybody whenever I ask that question in this class first guesses but let's see why it's not right. Let's go ahead and find it. So we have Laplace transform of t cubed. You made a normal guess, but there's, we'll see what's going on, why it's not that. Okay, so we got the limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b. This time it'll be t cubed e to the minus st dt. Okay, so the reason that it's not going to be 3 over s to the fourth comes from the fact that if we're doing this table I'm gonna put it over here I gotta make sure I got enough room I better write it a little smaller so I got t cubed 3t squared 6t 6 and 0 so because I'm taking a derivative each time and when I had t squared I ended up having 2t and 2 so that worked fine when I had t I ended up having 1 and so the, this was what ended up on top this is what ended up on top this is what's going to end up on top because we had to keep doing derivatives so 3 would be 3 times 2 or the 6 if I had a t to the fourth and I was going down here with the tabular I'd have a t to the third and then I would have 12 t to the second and then I would have 24 t and finally the number I would have on top for a t to the fourth would be 24 so what it is it's like the power factorial and so when it was just t one factorial is still just one when it was t squared two factorial is two times one so it's still just 2 but now we're on the 3 3 factorials 3 times 2 times 1 so it's going to be a 6 so I'm not going to write out the rest of the tabular I know you know how to do it and get the idea but bottom line what this is going to give us then is 6 over s to the fourth so in general if I want to Laplace transform t to some power it's going to be n factorial the powers factorial over s to the n plus one so here's our general formula for Laplace transforming something raised to a power okay now we want some more transforms because it's functions that we see a lot in differential equation solutions 
And besides polynomial things, we see e to the something a lot. So we definitely want to transform e to the something. So the Laplace transform of e to the a t, and we're just going to do it in a generic, an a, so then we'll have it for our, all of them. So that's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b e to the minus st e to the at dt. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that. That's a two exponentials multiplied together, so I'm going to keep the base and add the exponents together. So it's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity um, of 0 to b and it's going to be e to the minus st plus at dt. So I'm just using rules of exponents to combine those to under one exponent. Now I'm going to do um, one more thing before I do the integration then so that it'll be easy to do the integration. I'm going to factor out that t, but I'm also going to factor out a negative just because it's going to make it easier to work with. So let me show you what I mean. So I have limit as b goes to infinity, um, 0 to b, e to, I'm going to factor out a negative, which will make that s minus, uh, I don't know if I got to go get a new pen or what's going to happen here. Okay, negative s minus a t is how I'm going to write it, dt. So what I did is I factored the t out on the end because it's the variable, so I wanted it last. But I also factored a negative out just so that um, our s was positive there. It's just going to make it easier to think about and work. So um, it's not wrong if you didn't do it that way, but that's kind of... So kind of so we can get it the typical way you would see this Laplace transform listed. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the integration. And when you look at this, the integration, this stuff here is just a constant. It's just an S and an A. They're, they're constants when you're integrating with respect to T anyway. So that's just like there's something out in front of the T. And so that's what the chain rule would generate. So I'm going to need a reciprocal for that. So I've got limit as B goes to infinity. Doing the integration, it's going to be E to the minus S minus A T with a negative 1 over S minus A here so that the chain rule would um, generate the negative s minus a because it's what's in front of the t and so I need the reciprocal of that out in front. Okay, so after um, I have that, then I need to evaluate that from 0 to b. So let's go ahead and do the evaluation. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over s minus a um, e to the minus s minus a b and then we have minus a minus makes a plus 1 over s minus a e to the 0. Okay, we take the limit as b goes to infinity and here's my exponential with this negative. Now, it's going to go to 0 as long as s is greater than a, my constants. If s was less than a, then that it would end up um, giving me a negative in the parentheses that would combine with the other negative and be positive, and it would go to infinity. So the Laplace transform is defined as long as the integral converges, and it will converge if we make the requirement s needs to be greater than a. All right, and so now um, let's go ahead and take the limit then. That will go to 0 as long as we have that requirement on it. So what we have left, that's 1. So we have 1 over s minus a. So what that's saying is if you wanted to Laplace transform, say, e to the 2t, that would be 1 over s minus 
2. So just to give us an idea with a specific in there, it's just whatever the exponent is, or in the exponent, whatever the coefficient is on the t is what the a is there. All right, so we can Laplace transform powers of t. We can Laplace transform e to the anything t. And now we need to Laplace transform trig functions because they're the other things that show up in solutions to differential equations. And so we need to be able to work with those. So first we're going to Laplace transform cosine. So Laplace transform, now because this has a b in it, I'm going to use something different for my limit. Um, so let's Laplace transform cosine of, you know, bt, anything t there. So I'll do the limit as c goes to infinity, 0 to c, since b is used in the cosine. So that's going to be um, e to the minus st cosine bt dt. Now, back in Calc 2, you did exponential times a trig function and it was a cycling function and it was a big process you do integration by parts you have to do it two or three times and you have to do some substitution and it was kind of a big thing to work but it was doable so we're not going to bother to do it by hand there we're going to look at the integral table and see what it was because we don't want to take all that time to do the integration by parts. That was a Calc 2 topic. But it's doable integration by parts and that's where they came up with this on the table. So let's just use this integral table then. Now we got a few things going on here based on, I just pulled the integral table off an integral table um, that was online. And we've got B's and S's and T's and they're using A's and B's here and X's. And so we've got to define what's what before we use the table. Okay, so um, B in the table here is going to be negative S because that's what's on our exponential. A in the table is going to be our B and X in the table is our T. So whenever I use something in the table here, I need to make sure that I put in the correct thing for our problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's get limit as b goes to infinity, not b. We're doing c. Okay, so we're going to have 1 over a, but a was b in ours, so b squared plus b, b was a, so a squared. Okay, e to the, this has a b in the table, that was a. Um, whoops, no, nope, I didn't do that right. b in the table, that was negative s. And then x was t. And then we have our a was b sine bt plus our b was negative s, actually negative s cosine bt. Okay, so that was a little confusing because of the a's and b's and things and the roles they are and with the table, but um, we've got it there. And so now let's go ahead and evaluate that between 0 and c. So we have the limit as c goes to infinity, 1 over b squared plus a squared e to the minus sc. And then we have b sine bc minus um, s cosine bc. Man, that pen's annoying. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to see what we can do there. Okay, then we have minus. And let's see, we have, if we let it be 0, we have 1 over b squared plus, you know what, I just realized I had this a wrong here because in the table it was b and b is minus s, so this is going to be an s squared. That was my bad when I was subbing that in, so that's an s squared right here. Got my 
things confused. Okay, so b squared plus s squared and then e to the 0 and then um, b sine 0 minus s cosine 0. All right, so looking at this to try and now apply the limit, this is going to go to 0 and it'll get multiplied by the other stuff, so this whole thing is going to be 0. And looking at the second piece, um, sine of 0 is 0, so that's gone. E to the 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So I basically have, this was still multiplied, so I have a negative s times a negative 1 over b squared plus s squared. So that's going to make that s over b squared plus s squared. So they usually write the s first. That's the variable in Laplace's world. And usually if we had an x and a 2 or something, we'd write that first. So I'm going to write it in the other order. So all of that got us the Laplace transform of cosine, which is s over s squared plus b squared. So if it was cosine of 3t, um, if I Laplace transform cosine 3t, it would transform into s over s squared plus 9 because our b would have been 3. Okay, we got one more. We got a Laplace transform sine. And we're going to do it the same kind of way. We're going to plug it in and then we're going to use this um, integral table to do the integration part. <clears throat> so we're Laplace transforming sine bt and so that's going to be the limit as c goes to infinity of the integral 0 to c and so we've got we're going to have the same kind of thing going on. Let's see we've got this e to the minus st man that pen and then we've got um, sine bt dt. So using the table, let's make sure we can not mix these up. Okay, so our b is negative s, this is our t, and our a is b. So let's make sure I don't mess it up this time. I got the one of them wacko. So using the integral table, we still will have the limit as c goes to infinity in a minute. So we've got 1 over our a was b, so b squared plus our b was negative s, so negative s squared, which is s squared. And then we have e to the b, which was negative s, and x was t. So using that integral table, putting the pieces in. And then I've got b, which was negative s, sine a was b and t. And then I have minus a was b cosine Oops, bt, evaluated from 0 to c. So that was just using that um, integral table. And so now we need to do the evaluation. So we have the limit as c goes to infinity, 1 over b squared plus s squared e to the negative sc minus s um, you can see this is going to do the same thing as the last one on the front. All of this is going to end up being 0 because with the, this BC in there because this is going to go to 0. So all of that's going to end up in the limit being 0. And then we have minus 1 over B squared plus S squared. And we have E to the 0. And then we also have minus s sine 0 and minus b cosine 0. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the limit, and we'll have this last one. And so all of this is going to go to 0. And e to the 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is gone. This negative and this negative will make a positive. So it's going to be... Um, 
we've got a B, this is a 1, so it's going to have a B, and then it's going to have an S squared plus B squared. I'm just writing the, that first. Okay, so how was that different than cosine? Cosine had an S on top, and sine has a B on top. And so one way I kind of keep them straight, I mean, you'll have a table for reference, but the sine won't have the S on top. Sine starts with S, so don't put the S on top. That's just kind of how I keep it straight. Anyway, so that's what the Laplace things look like in Laplace's world for... Um, the basic functions. Now, question? Go back a slide real quick to the cosine. Does somebody have a question? I'm I'm hearing someone talking. I don't know if you wanted to talk to me or somebody else. <laughs> yes, yeah, can you go back to the cosine slide just real quick? This one? Yeah. One more. One more? Yeah. Whoops, wrong way. This one? Yeah, okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure I had this written down. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, sure. Anybody else? Questions? That was a lot of stuff. It's a lot of the integral stuff, limit stuff, you know, things we maybe haven't done for a little while, but doable. Um, so now um, the integral needs to converge, it said, the, provided that the integral converges. And so here is a um, definition. A function is said to be of exponential order if there exists m and alpha such that if you took the absolute value of the function, it's always going to be less than or equal to some constant times e to some constant t. And why they have this in there and asking you or explaining this is because if a function that you're trying to transform is of exponential order, then the integral will converge. So if it's always less than or equal to some m e to the a t, then we will know that the Laplace transform exists, and it um, because we could, if we could bound it. So what it's saying is, if we can bound the function with an exponential, then the Laplace transform exists. So that's why we learned this in. So let's do some examples of of showing that they are exponential. Um, of exponential order and then we know their Laplace transform exists. So I need to take the function, in this case it's t, and I need to have it less than or equal to some exponential. Well I could just use e to the t here because if you think of what, what f, of, f of t equals t looks like, it looks like that, and e to the t looks like this and e to the t is always greater than that. So I can bind it with an e to the t, and then I will know t is of exponential order, so I know its Laplace transform exists. Another function, so I have 3 e to the 2t, and if I can show that's less than or equal to some e to the, well, why not just do 4 e to the 2t? Um, that way, it, the left-hand one is always smaller, than the right hand one and so it's this is exponential order and so this function will have a Laplace transform. Now if I'm looking at this one so it's a combination of an exponential well the largest sign ever gets is 1 so I know that 5e e to the 3t sine 2t is going to be less than or equal to 5e e to the 3t because the sine will be between negative 1 and 1. When it's 1, these guys will be equal to each other, and any other time it's going to be less. So all of these functions that we're used to seeing in working differential equations, seeing in solutions and stuff, exponentials, polynomials, trig functions, and combinations, they are all of exponential order, and so they will all have a Laplace transform. So that's good news. We don't have to sit and check. Okay, one more thing about a Laplace transform. Now, usually for the Laplace transform, they use the curvy L, but I built this with um, math type, which builds the equations, and it didn't have a curvy L in it. So I just used an L, italic L, for um, the Laplace transform. But if you Laplace transform the sum of two functions, 
What that would mean, if you applied that, you'd have the integral of e to the minus st, and you'd put the sum of the two functions right there. Well, we know by properties of integrals that when you have the integral of a sum, you can break it up and take the integral of each piece and then add them together. Does this look sound familiar? This is the now and later thing. This is checking the addition property here to see if it holds. And if we add them now, then this, the left-hand one here, right here, is just simply the Laplace transform of F. And this is simply the Laplace transform of G and then added together. So this just showed that it, it does work for addition. You could add them now and then transform them, or you could transform them and then add them, and you're going to get the same answer. Let's check the scalar multiplication thing then that we checked. Um, we've done this in previous chapters. So what if you had the C in there now, and you applied the Laplace transform, the C is in the integral. Well, we know properties of integrals. You can move the C out in front, and then this is just the Laplace transform of the function times C. So whether you do the C now or later, you get the same answer. So testing these two things and finding they were both true tells me what? The Laplace transform is a certain kind of transform because these two properties held. So thinking of chapter 5 and what we learned, what can you tell me about the Laplace transform? What kind of transform is it? It's linear. Yes, thank you. It's a linear transform. So the Laplace transform um, is a linear transform. Okay, so when you're applying it, all those linearity properties that you use when you do integration apply. So if you've got a constant, you can move it out of the way and transform the rest and then put the constant on in a minute. If you've got a sum, you can transform each term and then add them later. So that's going to be helpful. So when we start doing combinations of things, we can break them down to Laplace transform them. Okay, so this is just a summary of the things we found. In the back of your book, there's a flap that has a Laplace transform table or a page. So like at least my book and some of the different editions are a little different, but you open the back of the book and then there's the first page, the last page it would be on the back side of it is the Laplace transform table. And so these things were good that we just discovered by applying the definition are on that table. You may use that table when you're doing your homework I will supply that table when you're um, taking the test, okay? So actually, yeah, I'll just supply that one, okay? So this first one here is if you need to transform t to a power. So we saw it was the powers factorial over s to the um, one higher power. We did have a restriction that s had to be greater than zero or the integral didn't converge. Okay, we transformed e to the a t, and we got 1 over s minus a with the restriction s had to be greater than a for the integral to converge. We transformed cosine and got s over s squared plus b squared again to get it to converge. The s had to be greater than 0. Sine looked the same except it had a b on top instead of an s on top. Now, Think of it, s is the variable in Laplace's world, so the cosine has a variable on top. When you transform sine, if this would have been sine 3t, it would have been a 3 on top. So just sort of some of the differences there. So these are the things we just discovered the long way by actually applying the definition. So they're just summarized here. Now we're going to start transforming things. Okay, so my little question mark, that was this, the curvy L that doesn't isn't on my laptop's fonts obviously. So we're going to transform this. So if we want to transform that we are going to break it up using linearity properties. We can do the two later. So we're going to Laplace oh, this pan. I'm just going to better have something figured out by Wednesday. huh? So I'm going to Laplace transform sine of 3t and 
the 2 can be later. There's a plus. I'm going to do the plus later. I'm going to move the 4 out in front and I'm going to Laplace transform t cubed and add them later. So that was applying both of those linearity properties. Constants went out in front to, to multiply after we do the transform and because it was a plus we just are going to Laplace transform each term and then we'll add them together. So here we have 2 the Laplace transform of um, sine 3t was b, which is 3, over s squared plus b squared, so s squared plus 9. So that's going to be 6 over s squared plus 9. This is what 2 sine 3t looks like in Laplace's world. Okay, so then over here we have plus 4. We're going to do 4 in a minute. We're going to Laplace transform t cubed. That would be 3 factorial over s to the 3 plus 1. So that would be 3 times 2 is 6 times 4 is 24. s to the 4th. And then we'd add them. So this function in Laplace's world looks like that. Any questions? That's bottom line what we need to be able to do is take functions and transform them and I showed you where all these came from applying the definition but you basically need to be able to use what we found now to get them transformed. Okay let's try one more. So <clears throat> here I've got a 5. I'm going to move it out in front and Laplace transform 1 just because I know how to Laplace transform 1 and 5 times 1 5 so I'll do it like that and then a minus we're going to do it later put the 3 out in front and Laplace transform e to the minus 2t okay the Laplace transform of 1 was 1 over s this was 1 over s times the 5 so this will be 5 over s and then we'll do the minus in a minute and Laplace transform of e to the something t was 1 over s it was 1 over s minus a and a was what was in front of the t so in this case it's going to be um, s minus a minus 2 so it's going to make it a plus because a was this whole thing right here alright so times by the 3 it's going to look like this so this function in Laplace's world is 5 over s minus 3 over s plus 2. Okay. Um, so we have what is called a multiplier rule and we're going to see what that multiplier rule is by kind of working with this that I've got on the screen here we know that this part right here is the Laplace transform of f of t. That was the definition of the transform. But I have a derivative out in front, but I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to Laplace's variable s. So let's do that. Well, one of the properties of derivatives and integrals is we can interchange that and move the derivative to inside, okay, like this. So we can do it in the other order. We can do the derivative and then the integral. And so let's do that. If we did the derivative of this, now this is with respect to s. All right, so if I do that, um, that's going to be, if we differentiate e to the minus st and s is the variable, it's going to be e to the minus st chain rule minus s no sorry minus how did I get that it was minus t because s is the variable of integration I was differentiating with respect to t I gotta think of s as the variable of integration chain rule would generate a minus t then and then we still just have the f of t dt on there because so this integral part is still here all as I did was did the differentiate that with respect to s and like I said, then the rest of that's still here. Okay, but um, when we look at that, so that essentially put us this um, negative t on there. And now 
if I think of the, um, this would be the Laplace transform. Let's see, we got the f of t in there. Let me just think what I want to do with this. Um, minus s. Okay, so this right here without the derivative on there is the Laplace transform. And so um, what I've got here is I'm going to have a negative if I um, took this out in front so I didn't have the derivative then this would be the Laplace transform of t and so it could be written like this because f of s is the Laplace transform. And so essentially what this tells me is what is called the multiplier rule. And it's right here, so th and this will be on your Laplace transform table. And essentially if you need to Laplace transform and you have t times a function, because that's what I had here, um, it is the derivative of the, um, with respect to s of the Laplace transform, but there's a negative on it because this negative showed up here, so we'd have to have a negative on it. So if we did negative, and what this means is we Laplace transform the function, but then we take a derivative of it with respect to s. So let me show it, show it to you um, as an example, and then you can make sense of the formula. Okay, so what I have to do if I want to Laplace transform a multiplier of t times a function, I have to take negative the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of e to the a t. So this piece is because of that multiplier factor of t. So what is the Laplace transform of e to the a t, that's 1 over s minus a. So when you have a t on the front, you Laplace transform the function, but then you take the derivative of it with respect to s and you change the sign because this got a negative sign on there when we did that. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of this with respect to s. Okay, so um, this is, I'm going to think of this as s, I'll put it over here, s minus a, man, sorry about this pen. If you think it's driving you nuts, what is it doing to me? Okay, so I'm going to write it like that so that I can take a derivative with just doing a power rule, chain rule thing. So I would do power out in front, decrease the power by one, chain rule would be multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, but the derivative of s is 1. Okay, now I need the negative of that, so that will change the sign. So I can write this finally as 1 over s minus a squared. So the Laplace transform of t e to the a t is 1 over s minus a squared. Let's do one more example so we can make sure we got it. Okay, so we're going to Laplace transform. I got a 3, which I know I can do later, so I'll just keep the 3 out in front. I've got a t, which I know then if I transform cosine a t, then I need to take the derivative with respect to s and change the sign. So let's do all of those things. I'm going to have a 3, and then I'm going to have a negative derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of cosine a t. And cosine was the one that had the s on top, and then s squared plus a squared. So there is um, the Laplace transform, except I'm not done because I need to take the derivative with respect to um, s. And trying to think if I'm going to be able to fit it in with my little space down there. I'm going to see. Okay, it is a quotient. So I'm going to do this negative and this 3 and put it right here. And then I'm going to do a quotient rule. So I've got bottom times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is 1 minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is 2s 
all over the bottom squared. Okay, um, lastly, I could do a little bit of simplification. This is a minus 2s squared and an s squared, so I could make that a minus s squared. And other than that, that's the Laplace transform. So um, just because I'm out of room, I won't rewrite that. But we could replace that numerator with a squared minus s squared, because the minus 2s squared and the s squared will make a minus s squared. So that's called the multiplier rule. If you're multiplying by a t, you transform the other stuff and then take negative derivative with respect to s of it, and that's what it looks like in Laplace's world. Okay, so with all of this, this, had it worked, I'll just see, nope, it's not going to work. So this would have, I would have been able to click on it and it morphed back into me. Okay, so the idea is, after we get it in Laplace's world, we're going to do some algebra to it, but then we're going to inverse transform it. We're going to get it back into our world so that it will look um, like something we can recognize. And when we get it back, it will be solved. And that's the cool thing about the transform is if you can transform it with an integral, do some algebra on it, inverse transform it, um, it'll already be solved and we're done with it. We're going to see examples of that on Wednesday. Right now we just got to learn how to get them over into Laplace's world and get them back. So how do you get it back? Sorry this didn't print. This is an L. The inverse Laplace is, is of the thing is just um, the function whose transform is f of s. So all of this is saying is like what you did when we used to differentiate and then all of a sudden we went to integrate. How do you do an integral? You figure out what that was the derivative of, right? So, you know, when we had the integral of x dx, how did we do an antiderivative? Well, you figured out what, you know, what's who, what function that was its derivative. And so you'd go backwards, you'd go one higher power and reciprocal of the power. Well, Laplace transforms the same way. How do you get it back into our world? You get it so you can recognize it as one of the Laplace transforms we just found, and then you bring it back. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see some examples. So all these question marks are these L's. I didn't know I was going to do that on my laptop. I built it on my desktop and didn't know it was going to look different. Okay, so here's an example. I need to figure out what this is a Laplace transform of. We know linearity properties hold, so I could write it like this. And if I want to inverse transform this, I can move the 3 out in front. And what was, what uh, functions transform was 1 over s. What functions, tra what did we transform and got 1 over s? So we can recognize it and bring it back. 1. 1. Okay, so this is just 3 when we bring it back. 3 over s is just 3 when we bring it back from Laplace transform. Okay, let's try another one. So this is 6 over s squared plus 9. Now you know how with integration sometimes you had to doctor them up so you could recognize them to get your antiderivative. Well, we're going to have to do the same thing. So this is s squared plus 3 squared. Oh, that's like s squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's going to be either a sine or a cosine. Well, the numerator is a number, not an s. So I know that this one is going to be sine. And what do I need on top for, for the number, the b, I need a 3. So I'm going to break this up and break the 6 up into uh, 2 times 3 because now I recognize this. So I could do, move the 2 out of the way, do an inverse transform of this other stuff and then times it by 2. So this other stuff, this, is b over s squared plus b squared. Man, pan. Okay. s squared plus b squared. Okay, so that will come back, put the 2 with it. That will come back as a sine 
3t because sine bt where the b is 3. So it's important that we're comfortable with what those things we just found looked like because we got to be able to make them look like that to get the inverse transform. Any questions on that? Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. So in the back of the book I'm looking at it looks like number nine, the little plus. Oh, wait. Me... No, I'm, I'm, I lied. This is cinch, not sign. Sorry. Right. They did the hyperbolics down there a ways. So the one you want to look at is number seven. Um, yeah. Well, that's got the shift, not number seven. Does it have them in here not shifted? Let's see. We're going to do the shifting theorem in a minute. Um Huh, that's interesting. They don't have it plain. They have it with the shift, which you need to know with the shift, but let me see here. Okay, look on page 472 in your book. They have a short table. So the back, they tried to cover everything, okay? And we're going to talk about the shifting theorem in a minute. Oh, it's here. I just didn't see it. It's number five. It's, never mind. There's a short table on page 472. There's more in the back flap than the short, but the short table's there too. But look at number five. That's what we want to look at on the back table. So it's b over s squared plus b squared is what we got, or b being 3. 3 over s squared plus 3 squared, so it came back as a sine 3t. Any other questions? Let's do a couple more. Okay, so um, now this one doesn't look like anything in the back. So in the back, don't look at the uh, right-hand column there if you are looking at your table. Let's look at um, basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is really all we've done so far. So we're going to look at 1 through 6 and actually we did do number 11 as well which was the multiplier but those are the only ones we've um, done so far so this doesn't look like any of those well the denominator kinda does this looks like s squared plus 4 squared but the numerator of that 1 through 6 I would need it to just be a single thing so any ideas what I'd want to do on this think of how, what some of your strategies were when you were integrating to get it to be something you could recognize as an antiderivative it's going to be similar type strategies what would I want to do here I'm going to want to go ahead Go ahead. You can break it up into two fractions. Yep, that's, thank you. That's what I was hoping you would say. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to break it up into two fractions because now each of those fractions is something I could recognize from the table or almost. These are going to be trig functions. This is very common solution to spring mass or something, a combination of a sine and a cosine. So, um, you know, that's no surprise that it would end up being something kind of like that. All right, so we got to doctor them up though because we've got to get them. So I'm going to rewrite these as four squareds because that's going to help us recognize it. Now, looking at the, so we're going to do them separate. We know that it's a linear transform so we can add them later and we can inverse transform each term. So looking at this one, this piece right here, I can do it it's 2 later right and s over s squared plus 4 squared that is cosine 4t okay so I've got the first term trans inverse transformed now the problem with the second term is it needs to have a b on top and b is 4 and it doesn't have a b on top well, what did you do when you were integrating? If you needed a certain thing, you could put it in there. I'm going to make a 4 there. That's what I need. But i got to compensate for it. I can't just stick it in there and change the value. So I could times it by 1 fourth 
times 4. That way they would cancel and leave me a 1, which is what was there, but I can now inverse transform this piece because it's b over s squared plus b squared. So that's going to come back as a sine. Whoops. It's going to come back as a sine 4t, but out in front is going to be that 1 fourth. So we're going to have to doctor them up a little bit so that we have it matching what we need to inverse transform. And so this is a good example of that. We split it up because we can't deal with two terms on the top. We don't have an inverse transform or anything that's that. And then we got to make sure that we have a b on top of the other one. If we don't, we put it there. But then we need to do the reciprocal as well. So any question on that one that I did? Okay, we're going to do the doozy then. <laughs> That's not the doozy, but even more involved. And think of what the kind of things you had to do for integration. And you're going to have to do similar things for inverse transforming Laplace uh, functions as well. So looking at this, it doesn't look like anything I know in its present form. So what do you suppose I'm going to want to do with it? Break it up. Okay. Actually, I could break it up. The problem, though, if I broke it up like I did the last one, I still have a denominator of s minus 1, s minus 2, and I don't have any kind of Laplace transform thing that looks like something like that. If I foiled it, I would have a, a quadratic. I'd have three terms, and I don't have anything that looks like that. So any, yep, there we go. Thanks, Baringo. We're going to do partial fractions. We got to break it up, just like we had to do with integrals. So we're going to have to do that. So we're going to do 3s plus 2. So rather than break it up, we'll just leave it together and do the partial fractions. Okay, breaking it up would have been okay, but then I'd have to do the partial fractions twice, once for each piece. So I'm not going to break it up. I'm going to do the partial fractions here. And that's going to be a over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 2. Clearing it of fractions, we got 3s plus 2 equal a times s minus 2 plus b times s minus 1. So we're going to conveniently let s be 1. So we got to put it in on the left hand side. That's going to make that 5. And then putting it in here for the a, 1 minus 2 makes it negative a. And putting it in on the b zeroes it out. So it looks like a needs to be negative 5. Then we're going to let s be 2. So 6, 7, 8 on the left hand side. And the 2 will zero out the a term and it'll make a b. So there's my b. There's my a. So we broke this down and it's going to be negative 5 over s minus 1 plus 8 over s minus 2. So we use partial fractions. Now can we take this and can we inverse transform it? What does this equal in our world if we inverse transform? Well, I recognize these now. The first one's negative 5 times 1 over s minus 1. And the second one is plus 8 times 1 over s minus 2. So bringing those back, they're exponentials. Negative 5 e to the um, t. Remember, it's s minus a, so s minus 1. So e to the 1t plus 8 e to the 2t. So those came back as exponentials after I did the partial fraction stuff. OK, any questions on that? So some of the techniques we use for integration, we're going to do similar type things. We got the first shifting theorem we need to talk about as well. And then we'll be done for today as far as types of things we can transform and um, inverse transform. We're going to uh, look at an example with this as well. 
Um, the second shifting theorem is not in today's section, but there's two of them, so that's why this is called the first shifting theorem. The reason it's called a shifting theorem, it turns out if you Laplace transform a function times an exponential, it ends up being um, the Laplace transform, that's what the capital letter means, the Laplace transform of the function, capital F is the Laplace transform of the function, but it's evaluated at S minus A, not S. If you were looking graphically at what F of S looks like versus what F of S minus A looks like, it's just shifted to the right by A, because we know when you put something in with the, the variable, it's a horizontal opposite sign uh, transformation and so if I had what it does when you have an exponential on there is it causes the function in Laplace's world to be shifted by a and so for example if we Laplace transform e to the 5t cosine 4t what we do is we figure out the Laplace transform of this part but then where the s was we do s minus a and our a in this particular case is 5. Alright, so let's do that. We're going to Laplace transform cosine 4t and cosine 4t normally is s over s squared, let me see, I'm not going to write it equals because that one had the exponential, but if we Laplace transform cosine 4t it's s over s squared plus b squared, right, in general. So s over s squared plus 4 squared is 16. So that's what the Laplace transform of cosine 4t is. Well, the Laplace transform of e to the 5t cosine 4t is this answer except the s is shifted by 5. So I would write it down where the s went, I put s minus 5. Where the s went, I put s minus 5. So that is the Laplace transform of um, e to something times another function. So you would transform the function, but then anywhere that the variable is, it needs to be shifted to the right 5 and so you put it, that's what the exponential does in Laplace's world, so you put the s minus 5 in place. So that's called the first shifting theorem and we need to be able to figure it out coming back as well. So, oh, I first I forgot I showed you, I wanted to show you the difference. So the red one is what the Laplace transform of cosine 4t looks like and the blue one is the Laplace transform of e to the 5t cosine and if we just look from 0 on you can see that they are just the same graph but because it had the e to the 5t it is shifted to the right by 5. Okay, so I've got one more to do and I didn't leave myself room to do it, so I'll erase this so I have. Let's just make sure we got the idea. So I've got a t cubed e to the minus 2t. This will cause a shift and in fact this time that shift is going to end up actually being to the left by 2 because our a is negative 2. So we're going to do the shift in a minute and that shift will be, um, well let's do it in a minute. So we're going to transform, let's just do t cubed up here. If we Laplace transform t, oh my goodness, Laplace transform t cubed. Okay, how did that work? It was 3 factorial over s to the 3 plus 1. Okay, so it was 6 over s to the 4th. Alright, so I'm going to write that there, 6 over, but where the s is, I need to do minus the minus 2, so it'll make that a plus to the 4th. So wherever the s was, it needs to be, um, 
s minus a, and a was negative 2, so s minus a negative 2 made it a plus 2. So there's the Laplace transform. Anytime you've got an exponential times a function, then transform the function, but wherever the s is, it needs to have the shift. Okay, so we also need to be able to bring them back. So if I see this in Laplace's world and I see s with a shift, I need to think about, oh, this one got transformed, but it had a shift, so that means there was an exponential there. So if we want to do the inverse transform to get it back, we're going to inverse transform without the shift, figure out what that was, and the shift will put an exponential on it. So the way I do it is I take care of the shift first and say, okay, there was a shift. That means coming back that there was an e to the 4t, e to the at where this was s minus a. So that is in there. Then I cross that off. Okay, I took care of the shift part. That was the exponential. Now I need to inverse transform 6 over s cubed. Well, let's think about it. s cubed if there was a 2 on top, that would work to give me um, t, t squared, right? And so I'm going to break the 6 up like this, and this comes back as a t squared times 3. So this is going to be 3 t squared e to the 4t. So anytime we see a shift and we're in Laplace's world, then we can put the shift in there by putting an exponential when we're bringing it back. Cross the shift off and then figure out the rest. And so just to keep you straight, you'll start to get confused when you first start working on these maybe. Students do a lot. And so just look at your variables and your function note what your function notation is and you'll know which where, where you are and you'll never have t's and s's mixed once you have a transform so everything's got to be s in Laplace's world and all the functions are capitals so that's how I know it's in Laplace's world when we get it back we've got t's and small letters for the functions okay I wanted to give you um, another example with kind of an extra tricky one, one that you may not know without seeing an example to try of how we're going to get something back. So let's do this one um, right here. Okay, this time we do have a quadratic denominator. We have nothing to deal with a quadratic denominator on that uh, Laplace table. We didn't ever see anything like this, so we're going to have to definitely doctor this up. And so what I'm going to do, you're going to need to be able to complete the square, because if I complete the square, I can write the denominator was an s squared something and a b squared with a shift. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So s squared plus 6s plus something to complete the square so that it will factor as a perfect square. Well, we know how you complete the square. You take the middle, divide it in half, and square it. That'd be the number that goes in the blank. Okay, so here it would be a 9. So you can do 9 minus 9 so that you didn't cheat and add that in, plus 13 like this. Or what I usually do is say still 9 of them from the 13, so I would do this, s squared plus 6s, still 9 from the 13, so it's going to be 9 plus 4. And that's the same thing as if you would have subtracted 9 and added 13. So either way your brain wants to think about it, but bottom line, what I did was I made this so it would factor into s plus 3 squared, and then I have the plus 4 on the end. So let's rewrite this with that denominator expressed in that way. This is going to be s plus 3 squared plus 4. Okay, well, so the shift is um, the a for the shift is negative 3 because it's s plus 3 here. And remember, the shift is s minus a. So in our case, 
my goodness, that pan is negative 3. Okay, so, well, but look at the numerator. There's an S there, and it's not got the same shift. That's an S plus 4. In order to inverse transform it, it has to have the same shift. So I'm going to rewrite this like this. S plus 3, Y3, because that's what the bottom has, plus 1. So I'm, I broke the 4 up. And then this is going to be S plus 3 squared plus 4. So because it wasn't the right number on top, because the, the shift has to match everywhere you see the S, I stole three of them from the 4 and I still have a plus 1. So the way I'm going to write this is S plus 3 over S plus 3 squared plus 4 and then plus 1 over S plus 3 squared plus 4. So I'm breaking it up now, taking the denominator to the s plus 3 part, because I had the right shift, and then to what was left over, which was the 1. So we're getting closer to being able to inverse transform it now. And I picked the hardest one for the example here, because I want you to have a good example of how to doctor them up. All right, could you inverse transform this term right here? What would be the first thing you'd want to do? Take out the shift. Yes. So it would be e to the negative 3t coming back. That took care of this and this, because the shift had to be anywhere that the s was. And so the shift part comes back as an e to the at. And our a was negative 3 here. Now I have s over s squared plus 4. And so I know that comes back as a cosine. And it's a 2t because remember this is b squared, so 2 squared. Whoops, that kind of floated funny. OK, so 2t. So that's the first term inverse transformed. It's a negative e to the negative 3t cosine 2t. Now. The next one, it's not right. I'm going to have to doctor it up because th there's a shift in there, and that's fine, and that's the only s. So I don't have to worry about the shift part. But remember, we need b over s squared plus b squared. So we know our b is 2. So I got to put a 2 up there so that I can inverse transform it. But I got to compensate for the fact I put a 2 up there. Now I can inverse transform this piece, but on the front. On the front end of it, it's going to be a 1 half. OK, so now let's go ahead and inverse transform that. The first thing we're going to do is deal with the shift. The shift brings an e to the minus 3t back. That took care of the shift. Now I inverse transform 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. So that'll come back as a sine 2t. And there would be my complete solution. Any questions on that? That one's one of the toughest ones to inverse transform because it needed a lot of doctoring up before we could recognize it and get it back. Now, I, you have to have some experience Laplace transforming and inverse transforming and kind of have some practice with that before we apply it to differential equations. We're going to apply it to differential equations on Wednesday. So really important, get your homework done for 8.1 before Wednesday because it won't, you, Wednesday stuff won't You'll be struggling still with the transform if you haven't practiced it. And so you'll lose sight of what we're doing with the dif differential equations. So this one of any, really important to have worked with this and gotten a little more familiar with it by doing the homework. That's going to make Wednesday's topic go a whole lot better. So I'm not going to start anything else. This is a lot to absorb for one sitting, even though it's not. 1150 yet it is certainly close enough for what we're doing so make sure that you get this homework done I will be around tomorrow morning at 10 in my office 
K here uh, for any homework help. So I'll just be online at 10. Typically, I will wait 20 minutes. And if I haven't heard from a student that they want to join or somebody hasn't come in I, I, and nobody's there, I will leave. But I'll be there for the whole hour if I have students there that have questions. If you want the help but you can't be there till 10.45, shoot me an email and let me know that and I'm happy to be there. If nobody shows up I'll probably um, go off line uh, in 20 minutes. I usually wait 20 minutes. So that's kind of the plan if you want some help with this. If something wasn't clear here and you want some individualized help um, join me tomorrow morning. Otherwise um, I will see you on Wednesday then to um, solve differential equations. And I'm happy to hang out now for anybody that has any questions. Otherwise, you're welcome to go, and we will talk to you later.